Octavia Hatcher died in 1891, and yet her name is still known by many in the town of Pikeville, where a statue made in her likeness stands watch in a graveyard overlooking the town. The story of Octavia's tragic death, being buried alive, has been a popular urban legend in Pikeville for decades. But how much of this story is fact and how much is fiction? We asked a series of local historians and researchers to weigh in. There have been a lot of stories about Octavia in the cemetery. There have been people who have said they've heard cries, a woman crying. There are a lot of people still today who won't go to the cemetery, especially at night. Octavia Hatcher passed away in 1891, and Pikeville was a very, very small town in 1891. It was 1889 when the school first came in, and at that time, Pikeville was very big in timber. Coal wasn't even really a consideration at the time. So very small, very rural, kind of the perfect setting for this type of ghost story. So this is the legend of what happened with Octavia Hatcher. Octavia was born to Jacob Smith, who was one of the early founders of Pikeville. Uh, so he was a prominent businessman in town. So they came from a very wealthy background. Octavia was born outside of Pikeville, probably came here for education as most of the people of means would have done at that time. She was a very beautiful, striking figure from a wealthy family. So I'm sure she was very popular. Her dad was a merchant, and as, as common, you run in the same circles. And she met and she married James Hatcher. James was a business partner of Jacob Smith. He worked pretty closely with her father, and then he branched off into different industries. He was a wild type of guy. He would do just about anything. Whatever idea struck him, he was going to do it. But a lot of the big things that happened with him, a lot of the expansive story that comes around him, happened after Octavia passed away. So at the point that we're with Octavia, he's just, he's just beginning. They got married when Octavia was 18 years old and he was 30. That was in 1889, not unheard of for that time. And I think James was deeply in love with her. Shortly afterwards, she gets pregnant. Everybody's excited. Everybody, uh, especially Octavia, she was probably the most excited. However, when it came the day to deliver the baby, the baby died. Uh, he was born, uh, he was only alive for a few hours. The little baby son passed away. Octavia didn't take it well. She took to the bed. She was lethargic. She was devastated. A lot of people say she fell into a depression, which is very likely. She also became ill. She would get sick with fevers. She would sometimes have hallucinations. This went on from January to May. So she suffered after the death of her child for several months. And then at the end of April, fell comatose. And on May 2nd, she was declared dead. May in 1891 was a particularly hot season, especially at that time there was no embalming. That's not the season to mess around with a burial. So they buried her. It was shortly thereafter, though, that they started noticing that there were other people in the community that were slipping into comas, and everybody was going down. The difference, sort of, is that they were coming back out. That led to James Hatcher getting very, very worried because while uh, there had been extenuating circumstances, Octavia had done the exact same thing. Immediately he rushes, he gets a crew, they dig up the grave, they open it up, and they do find Octavia passed away, she was dead. Unfortunately, she had not been when she was buried. The story is that the coffin could not have been airtight, so she would have had just enough oxygen to be able to wake. When they open the coffin, the lid of the coffin is scratched, the lining is scratched off of it, her fingernails are all broken and bloody, and she's got a contorted look of horror on her face. It was devastating to the community, it was devastating to everyone, and it was something that Hatcher would have to live with for the rest of his life. But they reburied her and didn't speak about it for a very long time. James Hatcher was a very eccentric man. And again, he was a very prominent leader in the community. He was very wealthy, but he never got over Octavia. She's 
buried just above the town, looking down where he builds a hotel. He builds his room at the hotel, looking up at her grave and has a statue made of her. So anytime he wants to look up there, he can see her. It's kind of, I guess, the guilt overwhelming him of, has caused him to do all this. Except Octavia didn't take kindly to that, right? Why would you? Everybody else gets to live and she does not. So periodically you can hear crying and you can hear weeping from a lady who has seen devastating loss and also lost her own life in a horrific fashion. And once a year on her death, the statue turns its back on the community that did not save her. So that's the legend of Octavia Hatcher, right? I think the best stories come from a kernel of truth. That being said, there's enough sadness in the reality of the story <laughs> to not add a little bit more. We've never been able to find a contemporary newspaper story about her death and supposedly being buried twice. I would think at that point in time, the way journalism was, that would have been a big story, not only locally, but regionally, maybe even statewide or national. I think that the story stems from James Hatcher himself. Like I said, he was a wild kind of guy. And the thing that he was most known for around here was the Hatcher Hotel. He had a small museum of curios and curiosities in there. And he also wrote on the walls. That's odd enough, but the oddest thing was in his curios and curiosities, he was known to keep his own casket. And in that coffin, he had a latch that could only be opened from the inside. So when he died and they locked him from the outside, he would have a way in case he woke up to get out of that. There doesn't seem to be any reference to Octavia Hatcher until the story of his casket starts coming out. It's almost like there's a connection between the casket and the idea of why does this man feel the need to have a casket to get out of? So there's no concrete proof that she was buried alive, but there's a lot of circumstantial evidence this is that she wasn't. That's the interesting thing about a story, right? The story becomes more important than the people involved in the story. And her truly sad story, coupled with her very eccentric widow, has made for a story that has held the test of time. Hey everybody, I'm your host Chip Polston from Kentucky Life. Now, let's say you like that story and you'd like to explore more that we have to offer. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button right on the screen.